How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's okay. Um, why don't people, people ask me the question, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, you already know who I am. You don't need me to introduce myself. Someone asked the question, is it true that some parts of the Bible were removed a long time ago? The answer is no. That is not possible due to the number of thousands of manuscripts, fragments, which was copied very early in the church history. And the writings of the early church um, and even pious Jews of the past around the world. Think of it. If I remove something from my manuscript and those in my neighborhood, I will have to travel around Rome an empire trying to remove the same in the manuscript of thousands who have handwritten their manuscripts from a other handwritten manuscript. Do you actually think they will let me? They will let me, hey, can I remove this from your manuscript? I don't think so. Do you think some would hide those manuscripts so it won't be perverted? I would have to know where every one of those persons lived who possessed those manuscripts. What if they remove what if they moved if these people moved to the catacombs or a country outside the power of Rome? How could I get permission from those countries who was not under Roman Empire a power? Or how you expect me to go inside a catacomb? Many people have gone inside catacombs and have been lost forever. They've died there because they they couldn't find a way out. I will also have to erase it from the writings of the early church, which quoted those passages, and the Jewish rabbis who also would quote the, quote the scriptures. This would be an impossible task. At that time, Christians would die for their faith, even now, but much more then. Do you think they will die for what they believe to be true and easily give out those things that nourish their beliefs? What they hold to be true? I don't think so. There may be some manuscripts who a person did pervert, even accidentally missing a line due to copious error or missing a word or even paraphrasing it. So it could sound easier to understand and these got copied, but... Not all shared the same mistakes or corrections. We have a wide range of manuscripts, and we could tell by the other manuscripts what are those that that been perverted or corrected if they did. Such a thing would have been known if all the manuscripts were taken out and to remove parts. It would have been spoken about by those who went against it. And the task would be an impossible task to perform. It would be impossible. If you was a king, you would have to be all-knowing and all-powerful to do that. And only God could do that and not human beings. Now, I wish to talk on today about faith and hope. Though I will talk about both of these things, I'm, my target will be on hope. Let's look at the definition of each one according to scripture and a glance of their dictionary of the Greek faith. The word faith, we find definition of it in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Greek word is pistis, and it means conviction of the truth of anything, belief in the New Testament of a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, generally with the included idea of trust and holy fervor born of faith and joined with it. Now the defin- now hope, the word hope means in scripture, Romans 8 verse 24, 25, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, 
For why would us one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. The Greek word is elpis, which means expectation of evil, fear, expectation of good, hope. In the Christian sense, joyful and confident expectation of internal salvation on hope. In hope, having hope, the author of hope. Or he who is its foundation, the things hoped for. Now, faith and hope, though both has to do with believing the unseen, carries two different aspects. Faith has to do with believing in what we can't see, which is in God. But hope has to do in waiting for something to happen that hasn't happened yet like Christ's second coming, or for an answer to prayer. Waiting on God is hope. Believing on God is faith. Faith at times comes more easier than hope. When you have faith, you pray, and many times we see it working together with works. Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 20. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works, not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the heart also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead also. But when you hope, you wait. And that is all you can do is wait while you look to him to send an answer or solve the problem we are in. Let's go to Ruth 1, verse 12 to 13. Turn back, my daughters, go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I shall say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight, and should also bear sons. Would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Psalms 39, verse 7, And now, Lord... What do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. But I will hope continually. That's Now let's go to Psalm 71 verse 14. But I will hope continuously. And will praise you yet more and more. We're... We are told to wait on the Lord so we can receive new strengths. What does this word mean but to hope, to rest in Him, and the one to solve the problem that we with our strength can't? We read in Isaiah. Whoa. Have Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Have you not heard? Have you not known the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Neither fainteth nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases his strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hope builds up perseverance, which is endurance in the Christian. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with endurance. Romans 8.25 What a mighty power is endurance, which we all need for another spiritual battle that awaits us while we are being in this world. I wish to continue in a brief, let's listen to Amazing Grace.
Truly, God is amazing. Let's continue our study. In the meantime, we're told, as we hope, God's love is being poured in our hearts as a fountain which never runs dry. Romans 5, verse 5, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Waiting on God can be the most hardest thing a believer has to endure. David stated in Psalm 69, verse 3, I am weary with my crying, my throat is dry, my eyes fail. Why wait for my God? Psalm 69, verse 3. David knew sometimes it's hard to wait on God. But at times it seems to to at times he seems to find it easier and sees the fast results as well in the Psalms. We read Psalms 40, verse 1, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Psalms 40, verse 1. How I like that part. But when it comes to Psalm 69, verse 3, I know it's happened to you too. We wait on God. We wait and we wait, and it's like he never answers. But then... Sometimes we just pray for something and when we see fast results or he makes us patient in the process. But I think the situation happens when we focus more on the situation, on the problems, than focus more on the God that we serve. Just like Peter, remember Peter, when he had his eyes on Jesus, He was able to walk on water, but when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he started to drown. And many times we take our eyes off of God, and that's when it starts feeling more difficult to wait on God. Waiting is difficult. I remember as a kid, my mama never had to, to give me my present in Christmas. As soon as she bought it, I opened it. I was a spoiled brat. <laughs> anyway, and I think sometimes God does spoil us in one way or the other. I never waited for the 24th. As soon as she bought it, I wanted it. And I cried till I got it. Anyway, but with God, he makes us wait at times. <laughs> but he does good when he does give his gifts. <laughs> Anyway, other times, the weight produces a quiet nature in David, as it does in us, if we would submit to it. Psalm 62, verse 5, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. Waiting or hoping is like the altar of the Israelites. If they put their tools to design it or form the bricks, they will ruin it. We read in Exodus 20, verse 24 to 25, An altar of earth you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it. Your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your ox, in every place where I record my name, I will come to you. And I will bless you, and if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it on healed stone, hewn stones. For if you use tools on it, you have profaned it. Close quote. God needs no help in our hoping, just an open hand to receive it when it comes. But in those times of hoping, we learn who is the sovereign one. Who can say yes, no, or just wait? Man. Sometimes we have to wait a little bit more on him. For we learn how powerless we truly are. And how powerful and awesome he truly is. If the animals 
<clears throat> have to wait on him, on God. How much us having to wait on him. Psalms 104. These all wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. God is so good. And we need to have our faith in him. We have to trust him to answer our prayers. We have to trust him to help us and guide us in our situation. <clears throat> I want to read a poem I wrote about back. Every broken, shattered dream or disappointing time will become a new chapter in the book of our lives. Like a caterpillar who after a long season of struggle becomes a beautiful butterfly, or like after a heavy storm, one can see a rainbow with its many colors, so are we. Our lives is as if it were a stage, and we are the actors playing a play that has just been written out. The author or playwright is God, who after all our headaches and pains has a wonderful ending in store. This book, though sad at times, will also have times of joy, love, hope, and peace. If we endure and don't lose heart, the garment of pain and suffering which we wore, or have to endure for a time will one day become a beautiful crown of praise for all the angels to see and admire. Oh, the capping and the hooray we shall see and hear when the angels we shall see, just as when it play ends and some stand and whistle while others clap as the actors come out and bow on stage. God is good. And we have to recognize that, brothers and sisters. God is so good, so awesome. He is so all that. I love this God that we serve. Let's listen to the song. I want to read something, a little story I wrote once. I once saw a kid chasing a feather which the wind blew away. The closer he reached to it, the further the wind would blow it away. As he thought, I have it in the tips of my fingers, the wind will blow it off the tips of his fingers. Higher and higher it flew away, the wind blew it till it was seen no more. 
Finally, when all hopes of his abilities was gone, it was time to pray. As the kid looked up and pointed out to the thing, he desired more than all this world combined. This feather, Father, I desire which he took away in Jesus' name. And sobbing, he said, Let it be for thee, and I give it to thee, for it was never mine since you took it away. As the tears went down his cheeks, he took his hand to wipe it down on his hand it came down wet with the dew of that rain that came flowing down many times we chase things the wind seems to take away but if in that time we give it back to god god if he desires will give it back to thee a good lesson to know there are things that we have to give it back to god We have to tell God, God, it's your burden. It's not mine. It's too heavy to bear. The Bible tells us casting all burdens on him because he cares for us. It don't matter what burden you're going through. And I know burden. I don't want to give you my pity stories. I know burden. But many times I have to take my burden and just give it to God. Because I can't hold it no more. Last night I was in a church service and I might continue visiting that church. <clears throat> and I might go to Sunday. I enjoy the service. And I needed the brothers to pray for me. And I gave my burden. Because it was too much for me to handle. And I sobbed, I cried. A grown man is 39 years old crying, yes. We cry. It's good to cry. And it's good to have brothers pray for you. When you have a burden that you can't bear. Anyway, and it wasn't the podcast, so it wasn't you guys. <laughs> Let's listen to one more hymn before we finish our program, or one more song. I like this one, Freely You Have Received.
what a beautiful song that is. I just love the certain songs that I put in this program. It's very good. And I like the old time songs and I found about 18 or 20 of them and those are the ones I'm using for this program. So if you hear the same songs over and over again, it's it's a good thing because you know what? You can memorize these songs and you can sing them when you're not hearing the podcast. And maybe some of these songs in the future, I might delete them and put some other old songs or something. But as now, I think it'll stay with these songs for a bit. Um, Lord bless you. I love you guys. And I hope to see you in the next podcast, which will probably be a few hours from now. Bye.